Hi everyone, good afternoon. It's time for lunch, which is great because I'm so hungry today. I actually did not have breakfast. Um, by the point, by the time that I kind of like got up and started, aside from checking my emails, even though technically the library is closed today, but I still, I check my emails and do things every morning out of habit. I was like, well, now it's almost time for book cooks, almost time. So I decided to wait. Um, so now I'm super hungry. I know every week I'm always like, I'm so hungry. Um, I'm super hungry today. Um, so, but today, and this turned out nice. I kind of thought it was gonna be a little bit of a bummer because it's been so warm out, but it's kind of a dull, rainy day. We're supposed to get rainy and uh, we're gonna make broccoli cheddar soup today. I've never made it from scratch before. And I don't even usually eat broccoli cheddar soup anymore because when you get it from the grocery store or at a restaurant, I mean, who knows what's in it? I don't know. So we're gonna make it from scratch. The recipe is available on our website right now. And it's also in my favorite cookbook. If you joined me at all uh, in the spring and summer, I've used this cookbook a few times and the newest edition was just released. It's the America's Test Kitchen TV Show Cookbook. And I have it on my Kindle. Uh, I'll show you the cover. There it is, the complete America's Test Kitchen TV Show Cookbook, 2001 to 2021. Um, every recipe from the hit, every recipe from the hit TV show, along with product ratings. Why that that has been up all since like Saturday? I don't know why that decided to just fall just now, just to embarrass me, I guess. Okay. Right, today is one that, yeah, it's been up since Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is one of my favorite cookbooks. I actually, this is actually my edition that I purchased myself. We do, we have a copy in the library um, right now. I think when I checked yesterday, it was still there. Um, but also I know there is one of these editions available on Libby. And so you can use it on your Kindle yourself, use it on your computer, whatever. Uh, on your phone, whatever, however you like it as an ebook. Um, it's really, it's such a good cookbook. I mean, it has so many different variations and it's really um, awesome. And I just enjoy it so much. So the recipe that we're using today, it should not be that difficult. Um, let me go to my bookmarks. Where are my bookmarks? There we go. Uh, it's in a chapter called Soups On, appropriately, and broccoli cheese, broccoli cheese, they don't call it broccoli cheddar, they call it broccoli cheese. Secondly, we're not just using cheddar, we're also using some grated Parmesan. Um, and I love, before each recipe, talks to you a little bit about like why this recipe works or the particulars of the recipe. Um, it says, why this recipe works. We were after a soup with pure broccoli flavor that wasn't hiding behind the cream or the cheese. Overcooked broccoli has a sulfurous flavor, but we discovered when we cooked our broccoli beyond the point of just overcooked for a full hour, those sulfur-containing compounds broke down, leaving behind intense, nutty broccoli. Its texture was fairly soft, but that was perfect for use in a soup. Adding baking soda to the pot sped up the process, shortening the broccoli's cooking time to a mere 20 minutes. A little spinach lent bright green color to the soup without taking over the flavor. After adding cheddar and Parmesan, we had a soup so full of flavor and richness, it didn't even need cream. Um, so the, this recipe, and they talk about the baking soda somehow speeds up. I don't remember the science, but once I read that blurb, I kind of remembered. I wasn't sure why there was baking soda in this recipe, but then I remembered when I read that, that I had seen it somewhere, that baking soda tends to speed up the cooking of vegetables in a boil. Not, I'm not entirely sure I should have done more research on that. But so I'm also like having the recipe, the full recipe, like I said, is available on our website or in the cookbook itself. Um, but I'm just kind of gonna wing it because I'm just making it for myself and I don't want it to go bad before I can eat it all because it's fresh. Um, so this recipe is using fresh uh, broccoli florets, but I, I have frozen. I had a really nice full bag of frozen, which I have already steamed in the microwave for several minutes. So in this recipe, it's like 20 minutes with the baking soda for fresh. It's gonna take me even less time because I'm using the uh, frozen. And I'm not gonna add baking soda, but if you're using fresh broccoli, use the baking soda. I don't need it because it's already been steamed in the microwave. Um, I already have two tablespoons about of butter in my pot, so I'm gonna turn on the heat. 
says medium high. So I'm gonna turn on the heat and let this start to melt a little bit before I'm going to add in. We're gonna start adding in like our aromatics and our broccoli to get those cooking. So that includes um, onion. Again, I have frozen onions. You know how much I hate chopping fresh onions. The flavor is so good. It's worth it when you're doing things like caramelized onions, but I just hate the way that my kitchen, I feel like my kitchen smells for like a week afterwards when I chop fresh onions. I can't do it. Um, onion, garlic. I have garlic powder. I ran out of garlic bulbs. Um, dry ground mustard, a pinch of cayenne, and a little bit of salt. Um, I'm actually not going to add salt at this stage because I think my butter is salted, but you should use unsalted butter. Like I always say, use unsalted butter. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get these onions in here first because they're still frozen. Let these start to cook and soften up, and then I'm gonna put the rest back in the freezer so they don't go bad. Once you defrost something, it's got it, got it cooked. Okay, just gonna stir this up to mix it with the butter so everybody is playing happily together, right? start to add in my spices. I'll add the broccoli last since like I said it's already been steamed. Um, so we are adding some garlic. I'm using garlic powder instead of cloves of garlic but it says about two medium garlic clo cloves, cloves minced or pressed through a garlic press. So about two teaspoon two teaspoons worth of garlic. Those are small garlic cloves, two teaspoons. That's this is not written from an Italian household. Like a medium garlic clove for us is probably like big for everybody else. Um, so I'm gonna go for about a teaspoon of the garlic powder. Like I said, I'm kind of reducing the recipe. I'm just eyeballing it. You don't wanna not have flavor just cause you're reducing the recipe, right? Um, a pit says just a pinch of cayenne pepper just for a little extra kick, a little flavor. I'm gonna shake some in cause I like, I like cayenne. Um, some ground mustard seed. How much is that? Uh, about one and a half teaspoons, so I'll do a little less than that. Come on out, buddy. Alright. I know you're not supposed to do this over a steaming pot because then everything gets stuck. Why well, you're supposed to use measuring spoons, but this is my quarantine kitchen. I'm a little lazy. I'm just doing things for myself. All right, I'm going to stir this up, make sure everything gets coated and combined. We want to wake up these spices in the pan. We want the flavors to bloom. We want it to combine with the onions and the butter. And I'm going to toss in my broccoli next. Do we need to do pepper? No, just salt. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do my broccoli. I'm going to kind of like shred it a little bit as I go but it is already really nice and soft, thankfully. Cause like I said, I, I steamed it in the microwave from frozen. Don't worry about chopping your chunks too small. We are going to take this to the food processor when we're done. Uh, you can use an immersion blender if you have one. I don't have one. I just use my food processor or blender, whatever it is you wanna use. It does make note to say like not to use like the woodiest part of the stems, but um, yeah, you want to make sure you're peeling your stems so that they're not so woody um, or uh, fibrous. And just make sure that you're chopping everything down a little bit so it cooks more evenly. I think this is the only thing that I'm missing. I feel like when you have broccoli cheddar soup, you need a bread bowl. It's the only thing I'm missing, but I don't really eat that much bread, so I'm not gonna have a bread bowl here, right? <laughs> All right, just a little bit more. I have like a couple more pieces I need to break up that are kind of big. All right, and the rest of these little chunky pieces can just go right on in. in the 
sink, wipe my hands. Uh, so I'm just going to give everything a stir to combine, and then at this point we're going to cover it with uh, about a cup of water and bring it up to a boil to cook that broccoli. And while our broccoli is cooking down, I'm going to show you more of this cookbook. Um, I was trying to think of a side dish to make to take up time, but um, I'm actually going to do a bunch of side dishes next week so that you can uh, kind of get ready for Thanksgiving that way. You know, whether you're uh, having Thanksgiving just yourself or you've found a way to safely have it with family or friends, um, I have some side dishes next week that I will show you. So I'm going to just make sure this is all nice and stirred and combined. I'm just gonna let this come back up to a boil and let my broccoli cook. I'm just gonna make sure, I'm just trying to spread the broccoli out so it's nice and even. I'll show you what the pot looks like. Precariously as usual with this, with this setup here. Right, so there we go, everything nice and lovely. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil so that the broccoli cooks really nicely. And remember, if you're using fresh broccoli, you're gonna use the baking soda to make sure that it cooks a little faster. Oh, see, I touched it. I touched it, and now it doesn't want to do. <laughs> Every time I touch it, okay. We have a better tripod at the library, but I leave that one at the library. So this one is just like my my side my side friend. Um, all right. So we're gonna let that cook. Bring to a simmer, cover, and cook until the broccoli is very soft. Do I need to cover it? Where's my Where's my lid? I forgot about my lid. to bubble up. I'm gonna cover you up and let you cook. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna show you some more recipes. I almost made chili this week. This recipe sounds really good. Um, also from the soups on chapter. Um, and it just gives you like all of the, the spices that you would need, which is really nice. You wanna make chili from scratch. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why is um, it asked for canned chipotle chili and adobo sauce. I feel like there have been so many recipes that have asked for like certain of the these certain kinds of like peppers, canned and sauce, and I can never find them in the grocery store. And at this point, I'm really not going to the grocery store that often anymore. Um, just trying to like not go out that much anymore. Um, and so I can never figure out where or how to find these canned chipotle chilies. But also like mostly I go to Trader Joe's and they don't have, um, they have like a lot of sauces that have stuff in it, but they don't have the actual chili. So I don't know. Um, and also this is a uh, ground beef chili. So it uses beef, of course you, oh, and dried ancho chilies. That's another one. I can never find that. Where, where somebody let me know in the comments, where do I find ancho chilies and chipotle pepper chilies in a can in the sauce or whatever. I can never find them. Um, this also uses beans. I don't eat beans. You could just omit it. Um, Oh, I like that it does say make sure you have lime because when you squeeze that fresh lime over all of those spices in that meat, it just just changes the way your palate picks up all the flavors. It's amazing. I love it. Um, what else did I bookmark? I don't know. I don't want to. Book okay, I'm still. I'm sometimes I'm still figuring out how to, <laughs> what all of the things on the Kindle means. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to make. Um, and maybe I'll still make this, not next week, but the week after. Um, Thanksgiving, what do you use to sop up all that gravy and the cranberry sauce? Biscuits. This recipe for cream biscuits sounds so amazing in this cookbook. Um, cream biscuits with fresh herbs. Come on, go back. I'm a little lost, there we go. I tapped forward instead of backwards. Okay. Um, the cream biscuits, I guess I'll share this in uh, like two weeks when I do it. Um, but this is really nice. It's it's easier because it's not, it says, it's 
It's a shame that many prospective bakers pass up making biscuits just because the recipe calls for the strenuous step of cutting butter into the flour or the messy move of rolling out dough time and again to get every last piece into a round. We wanted to make great biscuits that cut out these extra steps and, use a, and used a combination of heavy cream, flour, baking powder, and salt. A generous amount of heavy cream gives them a lighter and more tender texture. Kneading for just 30 seconds is enough. That sounds awesome. So I'm going to make this and then, um, like I said, next week I have some uh, potato and veggie sides where I have one that's potatoes and one that's pumpkin. And then the week after, um, we're going to do... I think it's like not like a cornbread but like a spoon bread and the biscuits so if you're looking for some things to add to your thanksgiving table if you're doing thanksgiving even if it's just you, you should still celebrate and make yourself happy some sides so yeah so i saved i saved this cream biscuit recipe and it really just is like no kidding flour sugar baking powder salt and heavy cream and that's it um and it bakes for about 15 minutes. Biscuits are so nice and quick. That's awesome. And then it shows you if you want to make something herbed, like maybe chives or garlic or whatever, you just add two tablespoons of minced fresh herbs into your flour mixture and then keep going. Um, there's also a recipe for cheddar biscuits. Um, follow the same recipe. You can add two ounces of sharp cheddar cheese shredded uh, and continue. Uh, bake for a couple extra minutes. There's also drop biscuits. I mean, there are so many. That's one of the great things about this cookbook. Um, and if you do check it out from the library, you will see it is massive. It is heavy, it is massive. Uh, but I'm really glad that we finally have a hard copy. We haven't had a hard copy in our library in a while. Um, because every dish that they give, there are variations. Like the chili recipe that I was talking about before, um, there's a different variation on the chili as well. Let's see if I can find it best ground beef chili. There was another one, wasn't there? Then there's this one that's just called our favorite chili. Um, our goal in creating the ultimate beef chili was to determine what the secret ingredients recommended by chili experts around the world were and which ones were spot on and which, which ingredients were expendable. We started with the beef, most recipes call for ground beef, but we prefer meaty blade steaks, which don't require much churning and stayed in big chunks in our finished chili. Like this, they just everything is totally, so many different variations. Uh, for balancing sweetness, we use light molasses instead of other weird ingredients, including prunes or Coca-Cola that they found in some recipes. I haven't had soda in, I can't even remember the last time I had soda, aside from ginger ale. I would not put Coca-Cola in my chili. Sorry, anybody out there who does that. Um, and finally, for the right level of thickness, flour and peanut butter didn't perform. Who puts, who's putting peanut butter in their chili? Somebody tell me, who's putting peanut butter in their chili? Don't, no, don't. <laughs> um, instead, a small amount of ordinary cornmeal sealed the deal, providing just the right consistency. So the ingredients for this one is so different than the ingredients for the next one, but they're similar methods, and I like that they explain why they use the ingredients they use. Um, pinto beans, more ancho chilies that I can never find, uh, de arbol chilies, cornmeal, oregano cumin, cocoa powder. I've done that before. A little bit of cocoa powder and cinnamon even in your chili rounds out the flavors of the spices. Really good. Really, really good. Chicken broth, onions, jalapenos, garlic cloves, diced tomatoes, light molasses, three and a half pounds of blade steak, and, and a mild lager such as a Budweiser. They're very serious here about their ingredients. Um, was there another chili recipe? No, but then there are also other soups, quick beef and vegetable soup. Um, and then I'll show you the table of contents so you can see another, um, another reason why I like this so much. So this, is, this book is broken up into sections. Um, So there's chapter one is soups on, then there's a whole section of salads, easy skillet suppers, one dish suppers, simply chicken, talking turkey and all the trimmings. Uh, we'll have the steak, pork chops every day, roasts and more, favorite ways with fish, dinner at the diner, who wants pasta, bringing home Italian favorites, the flair of the French, 
Tex-Mex tonight, no need for takeout, let's get grilling beef, pork, and lamb, let's get grilling poultry, seafood, and vegetables, sides, brunch, bread, cookie jar favorites, a piece of cake, pudding souffles, and more, fruit desserts, keep your fork, there's pie. <laughs> And then they, every, every edition, they have just a, like a little information about the current season that they're on. And then just like shopping guide for, I actually, I've never looked at that part. I never get past the pie. And then I'm just, I'm like, oh, that's it. That's when I finished it. Um, you, you know, your must have items, a good chef knife, um, a serrated knife and like where, which brands, because I know, um, those of you who also watch Test Kitchen, you know, they literally do test out all of the tools at the trade, the appliances, the knives, so they have their favorites on here too, because I know a lot of us look to Test Kitchen to decide which um, brand or type of kitchen tool we should purchase, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna take a look at my broccoli and give it a stir. I, just, I, gotta, get back to my, I gotta get back to my recipe. There we go, my little bookmark. There we go, okay, back to my recipe. I'm gonna give it a little stir, see how it's doing. My broccoli is already pretty soft, actually. Like I said, I did steam it in the microwave first. Oh, now I need to move my camera again. Hi. <laughs> I did steam it in the microwave first. So this is already pretty soft, and I can smell that broccoli smell. So I'm going to put my lid down on a safe surface. And we're going to move on to the next step. Hopefully that does not fall. I already dropped my phone for the first time yesterday when I was filming something else. Always. Okay, so what are we supposed to do next? Add the chicken broth and two more cups of water and increase the heat. Once it simmers, you're going to stir in the spinach. So let's add in the broth. How much broth do I need to add? About two cups. So I'm going to do a little more than a cup. I need to shake this up. It's been sitting for a while. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in about another cup of water as well. We'll let that come back up to a simmer. Come see what it looks like. There it is. There it is. So there is not that exciting. It's just broccoli that's cooking. But <laughs> don't fall. Please don't fall. Oh, you look like you're ready for takeoff, buddy. Okay. <laughs> it always, I never get it right in the exact same spot. I need a better uh, setup here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let this come up to a simmer. So I need to get my spinach ready. So how much spinach do I need? About two cups, so I'm gonna reduce it. Like I said, I'm kind of having this recipe. Oh, there goes my bat taking flight. I have to switch it out for, uh, I think Lego has some reindeer and snowmen that look like this. I'll have to get those instead. Also, the recipe does call for, you did not see that, for the spinach by weight, which is much more accurate, so you can do that instead. But I'm just eyeballing it. Most of the spinach, they said, is for color, a little bit of flavor, so it's no big deal. Um, we're starting to get some bubbles. We're not quite there yet. Not quite. And then I'm going to get my food processor ready because that's the next step. And you can do it in 
batches. Um, I may actually switch to the blender because the blender is at higher capacity. And uh, my food processor works again, but the, you know, the last time I used it, it worked fine, but the last time I used it live on camera, it did not work. But the motor on the blender seems to be working fine. So I'm gonna get this set up too while I'm waiting for that to come to a simmer. Switch this out for my blender, which is right down here. All right, good. And you do it in batches so as not to overwhelm your blender, um, especially if you're cooking the full recipe, you are definitely gonna need to do it in batches. I'm gonna pull my blender out here. Don't forget the lid, very important. I'm going to put the rest of the spinach in the fridge. And then I have um, just a, a bowl standing to the side for once this gets blended, I'm going to pour this into the bowl and then finish putting that into here so we do it in batches. And then the whole thing is going to go back into the pot when we're done. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stir in my spinach. I've got some nice simmering bubbles. Spread it out. You know what spinach does? It wants to clump all together and just form one sad little string of spinach because we all know how much spinach wilts down so quickly. Give it a little stir just to encourage some wilting and mixing in. Make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. ladle here so I can do this. I'm going to move everything out of the way so that nothing gets ruined. Because that will happen with me. That will definitely happen. Okay, I'm plug this in. Move this over. Shift everything over. Um, and you don't start to taste it until it's blended together. Um, if you watch me normally, you know that I always taste along every step of the way for seasoning. But once it is blended and we add the cheese in, then you can start to taste it. Um, so this is also the step where we add the cheese. Um, add the cheddar and Parmesan. Um, so how much are we doing? About a qu three quarters of a cup. Parmesan and about the same of cheddar. So yeah, this is nice and bubbly. So now I'm gonna put this in the blender and we're gonna blend it up. I'm gonna move my cup over here. There we go, that's smarter. All right, here we go. Make sure you get your liquid so that you can actually blend it. You don't want it to be just all chunks, right? Because that will be hard to blend. Turn the heat down so what's left in the pot doesn't overcook. Okay, I think that is good for our first batch. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cheeses, my favorite part. <laughs> So we're doing three quarters of a cup, count with me so I don't lose track. I did it yesterday when I was making brownies for a video for the teens, totally lost track. Add one, two, and I'll save the last one for the next batch. And then let me get it in. I'll do the same thing. I'll do half-ish for the cheddar. So let's do one and two, and then I just need one more quarter of a cup in the next batch. See, it's not like overwhelmingly cheese, and like the recipe said, there's no cream in it. Um, so it's actually like a pretty healthy and decent broccoli soup. All right, so remember I have the loudest blender in the world. So here we 
go. We're gonna blend it up until, um, it says until smooth, about a minute, we'll see. We'll see what this blender can do. spot on top where the cheese had yet to be sucked down into the vortex. Perfect. So now I'm going to take this and put this in my bowl. See that lovely green color from the spinach? And now I'm going to put the rest of the soup mixture and my remaining quarter cup of Parmesan and quarter cup of cheddar um, into this as well. And then we'll put everything back in the bowl. All right, here we go. Round two. Scoop it in. really is like a lovely, lovely green color, which is nice because like I said, normally when you get broccoli cheddar or any kind of soup from uh, a lot of restaurants, especially like chain restaurants or from a can, it's this obnoxious neon orange color and it, you don't know what's in it and it definitely has a lot of salt and sodium and a lot of fillers and thickeners and this is just, this is just plain good and healthy. Oh yeah, this is definitely a smaller bag. All right, Alyssa, good job. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick this up and pour this. I think I need my pot holders. Pot holders. The handles of the pot get a little hot, so just be careful. All right, here we go. Gonna pour that last bit in. Get in there, my friend. Scrape everybody out. I mean, you don't have to. If you do like some chunks in your soup, you could reserve some of the broccoli to, to top your uh, soup with. Okay, good. And then just like I just did, I made sure to turn off the heat. I'll turn it back on, but you don't want the bottom of your pot to scorch while you're blending because that's possible. So here we go with my last quarter of a cup of cheeses, quarter of a cup of Parmesan, and a quarter of a cup of cheddar. I'm probably going to do a heaping cup because I was a little wimpy on the cheddar on the other ones. And I love cheese, so it doesn't matter. Thing. We're just going to blend it until it is smooth, and then we're going to put everybody back in the pot together. Make sure this is not tight. Let's not turn my kitchen green. Here we go. <laughs> that's hanging on for dear life. All right, I'm gonna unplug this. This goes in the sink. I'm just gonna pour these both right back into my pot. It says to bring it up to a simmer and then we can start to taste for seasoning. All right, we're gonna make sure we get out every last drop of this good stuff. back in the sink and I'm going to scrape this one out. I'm going to bring this to a nice low heat in the meantime. Okay. 
So I'm gonna to start to taste it for seasoning. And so at this point you can add some more chicken stock or water, uh, depending on the flavor, uh, to, to thin or thicken it. I'll bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see uh, what this looks like. It's gonna start splattering too though. It's thick. Hello. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a taste. Oh, it's good. I'm gonna add a little extra chicken broth to thin it just a little bit and to add some, uh, just some more flavor so I don't need to add salt. To be honest, I don't, I'd rather just do it with the chicken stock because that's got more flavor. Um, I'm gonna bump up my mustard seed and cayenne as well. Just to get a little extra uh, dynamic flavor. And it says you can add more Parmesan too. Give it a stir. See, it is like lovely and thick and it is nice and smooth as well. Like I said, if you do like to have some uh, chunks in your soup of the broccoli or whatever, you can reserve some of it. You don't need to blend all of it. This is a really nice, smooth consistency. All right, I'm gonna give it another taste. Oh, it's very good. Very, very good. Mm. What does it need? What does it need? Actually, I don't think it needs anything. It's really good. So you can see with the bubbles, you can see what the consistency looks like. You can continue to um, thin it out. I probably just added an extra like third of a cup of the chicken broth. Um, I probably wouldn't add much more. If I do want to thin it out anymore, I would use water because you don't want to add a lot of extra salt. But I do like to use chicken broth instead of water at some point just because of the flavor. Just adds flavor. Um, and then it says to serve, we're going to top it off with some extra Parmesan so you don't need to add any extra cheese at this point. So I'm going to let this continue to bubble up and then we're going to move the camera, we're going to get my bowl, and we're going to get ready to eat. And this was really, really easy. again. Here I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my bowl. Uh, I'm going to cover up my spices. And, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this was, I mean, this was really that easy. Um, it did not take that much time. It was easier for me. Like I said, I used frozen broccoli and I steamed it in the microwave first. If you're using fresh broccoli, you're gonna to wanna to follow the tip in the recipe about adding your baking soda and making sure that you're really steaming and boiling for probably a full solid 20 minutes. Oh, where's my bowl? Got my bowl. Extra cheese. Just a little sprinkle of each to enhance the flavor. Okay, and then these definitely 
have to go back in the fridge right now along with my chicken broth. So you can go ahead and melt for a second, but I need to get these back in the fridge. It's a little humid in here today. is my lunch today. This delicious, delicious soup. Um, I'm really proud of myself. I've never made a soup like this from scratch. I do a lot of chili in the slow cooker and on the stove. Um, and I've made like a, um, like a root veggie spinach chicken soup before, but this, this kind of thing I've never done before. It's really good. It really tastes like broccoli. You can taste the spinach a little bit, but it really just tastes like broccoli and it tastes very, very creamy, but there's only a little bit of cheese in here. There's really not that much cheese and there's no other cream. It's just broth and water and the broccoli itself. But because the broccoli was cooked, um, you know, steamed and then cooked down, or if you're doing it, like I said, if you're doing it fresh, you cook it for a long time in that pot, it really has its own special flavor and you don't need cream or anything, just a little bit of cheese, right? Like three quarters of a cup of each for that whole pot. It's not bad. It's good, it's really hot still, but it's actually delicious. And definitely don't be afraid of the cayenne. Um, I probably could have used more garlic, but I think I like the cayenne flavor coming to the forefront better than the garlic, so I'm glad I didn't. Uh, but remember, you definitely taste your food. You need to taste it for seasoning. Um, for, I'm probably gonna, it's just me, so I'm gonna finish that pot before it goes bad. So tonight, when I have it tonight, I have some Italian sausage defrosting in the fridge, so I'm probably gonna crumble that up on top to add some protein. You could do shredded chicken, would probably be delicious. And again, if, if you eat bread, put this in a bread bowl. You will be so happy. <laughs> so that is it for me today. Um, I will put up next week's recipes tomorrow. Like I said, we're gonna do some sides for Thanksgiving and the week after we'll also do some sides for Thanksgiving. Uh, just some fun stuff so that if you're thinking about Thanksgiving, just know that we have plenty of cookbooks and plenty of recipes uh, for you to take out for a curbside pickup. And that is it for me. I'm going to go enjoy my lunch. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.